Alrighty then. Well, the best laid plans of mice and men. Is that how it goes? <laughs> well, it's pouring outside right now. So we came inside the building. I'm in a building here at the U. And what do you know? There's a table set up, and there's a man who's got a long strand of hair growing out the back of his head, which usually is the sign that you're dealing with a Hare Krishna. So let's just see if I can talk to this fellow right here. In an orange deal. Sir, would this be a good time to ask you a couple of questions while you're sitting? And if somebody comes, I'll just walk away. Is that okay? Somebody comes, I'll excuse myself. You'd rather wait? Cool. All right, I'll come back. I'll be back. There is a picture of a, uh, well, let's see. I, I'm trying to describe the artwork, I guess, for lack of a better description, on his table. The man's wearing an orange robe. Uh, with a shaved head, with a long strand of hair growing out the back, with books like the Bhagavad, but I can never say this, the Bhagavad Gita, the holy book of Hinduism. But there's a there's a piece of art. All right, Mike, you describe that. You're an art critic. Describe that thing sitting there. Well, it's like a bull with a man's face, and he's kind of cringing underneath a man who's swinging an axe, and he happens to have the bull face. It's like a reversal of some type of irony or something meant to depict I. Oh, yeah, now that you say it, that, okay, so the bull has the man's face, and the man with the axe cutting off the bull's head has the bull's head. What do you think that means? I don't know. Be I'll, 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 bet it's, I'll bet it's about not being mean to cows because they're our brother and we're the same. Yeah, it could mean that. I mean, depending on what kind of art critic you are, you can look into it. Oh, I'll, I'll, you know what? I'll bet that's it. I'll bet, I'll bet that's what it's about, that we are all really the same. We're one spirit. And you've, of course, once again with Hinduism, you've got your Brahman, Atman, you've got your Dharma, and your Karma, which is our little Hindu four-point cursor on trying to remember what this very confused religion is about. When you've got the Brahman is the god, not an object, but a just a, an infinite being out there is the Brahman. Your Atman is your spirit, and the goal is to have your spirit enter into Dharma, to be in alignment with the Dharma that's out there, the the order of things, the circle of life, the way things should be. And if you don't, well, then karma kicks in and it whacks you. In other words, do unto others as you would have them do unto you. And what goes around comes around is really what karma does when you interrupt the dharma. And so my guess is, because we're all one spirit, just like Pocahontas sang to our children over and over again, everybody's just whether you're a rock, whether you're a bird, we have one spirit, one name, we're all life forces so that's what my guess is that is with the hindu fella the hari but he's but he's got to be he's got to be hari krishna what'd you say i got a photo of it so it'll be on the website so you can see the bull and the, the whole deal now the other thing that's kind of interesting is he's got ashes on his nose almost like makeup like a yellow ash with two lines going up his brow that's a little bit interesting too we'll talk to him in just a bit when he gets some company in the meantime i'm going to wander on we're going to uh, go back to the table here. There's several tables, as always, set up at the University of Minnesota. And, and one of them is a creation table. Uh, and another one, though, is a, uh, a pro-democracy, uh, ah, kind of a freedom type of thing. You know, that old freedom thing. And then there's a, there's a Hindu table where there's a guy. Oh, and he's got his helper. Oh, good. So I could maybe talk to him. Let's see if I can talk to this fellow and find out what he's all about. Sir. How's my timing? Better. Yes, sir. My helper is agreed to answer your questions. Oh, terrific. Great. I'll talk to your I'll talk to your helper. Oh, cool. Hey, tell me what your first name is. Uh, my uh, spiritual name is Atma Prashad Krishna Das. All right. And what is what does your spiritual name mean? That means I've uh, taken what's called initiation. It's almost like baptism, where you take a uh, you you take on a person who's more spiritually advanced to be your guide in your spiritual path. Okay, but what does the name mean? The name means a servant of Krishna or God who satisfies the soul. Right. And you said your Christian name is what? My birth name is Eric Paulson. Yes. Okay, but you called it your Christian name, is that right? I didn't believe Did I? Oh, I'm sorry. I maybe didn't hear you correctly. Okay, so tell me, what should I call you? You can call me Atma. Atma. All right, Atma. What religion is being represented here today? Um, actually... It's called Vaishnavism, but what the philosophy is, is it's presenting the substrata philosophy of all the religions, or the eternal principle of the soul. All right, and so the, I've noticed that you've got the Bhagavad Gita that's there. Is that the holy book? Yes, correct. And who, and who wrote that? It actually is a recorded conversation between uh, Lord Krishna and his friend Arjuna. And tell me who Krishna is. 
Krishna is another name for God. So. And describe this God for me. Well, he's he's Krishna is another name another name for God, like I said, and it's the same God that every like Islam worships, Christianity worships. It's just like the sun has different names all around the world. It's the same, you know, monotheistic God. Really? So that he's actually is he sitting in a place somewhere? That's an interesting question. He's both in one place and he's everywhere at the same time. Right, so you would call him omnipresent? Yes, correct. Is he in all things? Yes, correct. Is all things him? It's simultaneously one and different. All things are him, but not everything is God. For instance, I'm not God, but I am I am coming from God. I want to get make sure that I understand that because there's a slight distinction between pantheism and panentheism. Is this a pantheistic religion? Can you define both terms for me? A pantheist, there's a minor distinction between the two, but basically that God is in everything. Like this pillar that we're leaning against, this is God or God is in this. And what was the other term again? Well, that's pantheism would be this God is this is God, he's here, or that God is in. That's panentheism, that God is in something. Minor distinction, nonetheless, there's God in everything. Do you believe that? Yeah, but we believe everything is coming from God, but the personality of God itself is separate. All right. And so you said that this is the same God that Muslims believe in and that Christians believe in. Is that correct? Correct. Oh. What do Muslims believe in about God? Who is God to the Muslim? Well, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, the word Islam means uh, ser- to be servants of God. You know, so they're servants of God. Just how does how does a Muslim get to heaven? Um, I don't. I don't. I haven't been studying Muslim or Islam very much, but I believe by through serving the Lord through their prophet Muhammad. Right. And describe the attributes of Allah that like a Muslim would. You know, from my understanding, the word Allah means, the, I believe, the greatest or the almighty or something to that extent. So I, don't, I guess I don't understand your question. How? Well, you'd mentioned that, that your understanding of Krishna is that it's the exact same God that the Muslims worship and the Christians worship. And I was just wondering what your understanding is of Allah. Tell me, tell me, who do you think Jesus Christ is? Jesus Christ is a prophet of the Lord. He's an incarnation. Is that all? Okay, that's what you believe about it, correct? Yeah. And what are, what are the attributes of the Christian God? Like I said before, it's like the sun. It's the same sun, but people call it different things because they're coming from different languages, different times and circumstances. So the attributes of God are, you know, universal principles. Yeah, well, I guess what I'm trying to perhaps understand is it seems to me the principles of Islam and the principles of Christianity are radically opposed to each other. They're not the same thing at all. So I'm just wondering how Krishna could be the same God as all of them when they say themselves that they're the only God and there is no other. How do you harmonize that concept when they themselves say that Allah is not the same as Jesus Christ, Jesus isn't the same as Allah or Buddha or anybody else? How do you know that it's all the same God? I think you're actually quite mistaken. The principles of the religion are different. Maybe the practices differ, but the basic, the basic fundamental fundamentals are the same. Islam is their idea is serving God. Same with same with Christianity, serving God through Lord Jesus. We're serving God through Krishna or our, or our chain of spiritual masters. So the, princi- the ultimate principles are the same, but the practices may, may be different. Okay, let me come back to that in just a moment. This fellow who's sitting here, in his, uh, he's wearing orange clothes. Is there a reason that he's wearing orange, or that's just what he picked today? Actually, there is a reason. Um, he is a renounced monk in the uh, what's called the, the spiritual order of sannyasi. He's given up everything just for serving and, and uh, preaching about the Lord. So when you take that order of life, you take... You wear special garments to kind of like a uniform almost to show that, you know, I'm to remind yourself and to show others that I'm, I'm a monk now and I'm practicing these principles uh, wholeheartedly. And on the back of his head, he has like a long piece of hair like you do. What is that called? That's called a shika. And what does a shika do or why do you have it? Okay. Shika is like the flag on our temple. The body is another, you know, temple of the Lord. And this is like the flag on top of our temple, reminding us that the body is just a temple of the Lord to be used in his service. And what do you think is going to happen to you when you die? Well, hopefully, well, not hopefully, I'm going to go back to Krishna and try to be his eternal servant. As Just like I'm doing on this earth, I'm trying to be a servant at all times, a Lord's servant. So as on, as earth, as on earth as it is in heaven, I'm going to be serving the Lord in heaven. Uh-huh. And how are you going to get there? How do you get to from this place to that place? It's it's through the mercy of of the Lord. 
and his pure devotees. They're gonna the, when when I die. See, the the one thing you gotta understand is the body is different than the soul. We're not this body. We're actually a spirit soul within the body. And when we leave this body, the spirit soul is taken to the heaven. To heaven. As long as you you purely want to serve the Lord, 100 percent. Now I heard you can correct me if this is wrong, but one of the reasons for that hair pe- what is that called again? Shika. Shika is that so that Krishna can pull you to heaven? Is that is that a correct understanding? I've heard that too, and it may be, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know if that's actually scriptural, but I've heard that as well. <laughs> okay. And so you said for pure devotees, they're going to go and serve Krishna. I'm not a devotee. Where am I going? Well, you you're a devotee of Lord Jesus, I believe, correct? Uh, yes, I am. Then you'll probably go to Lord Jesus and serve Him wherever. 